Are we good? Okay. We are streaming now. Okay, thank you. And good evening, folks, and welcome to the USD 3D3 Manhattan Ogden Board of Education meeting for July 1st, 2020. Um, you'll notice that although we had initially planned that we would be back in person this week, we have decided to um, follow the data and follow what's happening in our community and keep at home at least one more, one more meeting and play it safe that way. So we are continuing to meet uh, virtually this evening. And with that, we'll have the uh, roll call, please, Diane. Brighton. Brighton. Here. Coleman. Here. Edie. Here. Herman. Lewison. Here. Santos. Here. Hagmeister. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Madam President. Yes. I move um, to remove item 13.1, executive session negotiations and approve the amended agenda. Okay, motion from Brandy. Is there a second from Daryl? And I can see everybody. So let's just do a show of hands to approve the agenda. And I see six hands by board members. Motion carries six zero. And with that, we will um, stand where we are and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Carla, are you leading the pledge? I'll do it tonight leading? if that's okay. okay. That's perfect, thank you. Great. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We don't have any special recognitions this evening, which is not uncommon during the summer. Um, for the recognition of visitors and citizen comments, did you get any this week, Diane? Okay, so we don't have any and again, just as a reminder to the public that we still are taking public comment or citizen comments, and they just have to be submitted to the board clerk ahead of time. And then they would be read right into the record from our meeting. For the consent agenda, y'all can sit back because this is gonna take a few minutes. I'm gonna go through that. We've got the June 24, 2020 minutes, consideration of bills, the human resources report, which um, to recognize from that, we have Santina Baslock, who's the bus monitor for the, man, for the transportation department. She has submitted her retirement effective August 1st, and she's been with the district since September of 2005. And then we have Sandra Richard, who is a teacher at Theodore Roosevelt, who has submitted her retirement effective today, July 1st. Ms. Richard had been with the district since August of 1992. So we definitely want to recognize and appreciate their service to our students. For item 6.4, we have the annual duty appointments that I'll read through. For appointment of clerk, we have Diane Dennison. Deputy clerk is Melissa Butler. For treasurer, it is Lou Faust. Deputy treasurer is Jill Tatum. Legal counsel is Richard Seaton. The Freedom of Information Officer is the Director of Communications and School Safety. The representative for federal programs is Dr. Wade, Superintendent. Officer to approve payment in advance of board meeting is Director of Business Services. The representative for food service program is the Director of Child Nutrition. CAPERS representative for USD 3D3 is the Director of Human Resources. Um, administrators to report truancy for Manhattan High School, Anthony Middle School and Eisenhower Middle School principals and their assistants will be designated to report truant secondary students to the county attorney and elementary school principals and their assistants will be designated to report truant elementary students to the Department of Children and Families Office. Section 504 Coordinator ADA Compliance Officer is the Executive Director of Special Services. 
Affirmative Action Chairperson, Title IX Coordinator is the Director of Human Services. Impact Aid Representative is the Director of Business Services. Designation for Coordinator of for Homeless Children Duties is the Director of Teaching and Learning. And um, for the appointment of student due process, hearing officers is building principals, assistant principals, and licensed district level administrators are authorized to conduct hearings for student suspensions and expulsions. And we have the annual organization matters, which includes the affirmation for district vision, mission, goals, and objectives the depositors for 383 USD 383 district funds, resolution 2021-1, authorization for petty cash funds, authorization to establish activity funds, which includes Manhattan High School, Anthony Middle School, and Eisenhower Middle School, resolution 2021-5 to establish purchasing cards, resolution 2021-6 to rescind policy statements found in past board minutes, Adoption of the 1,116 year, year, hour, hour calendar option, the notice of non-discrimination, the official de newspaper designation, which is to reaffirm the Manhattan Mercury, resolution 2021-7, the waiver of generally accepted accounting principles, uh, resolution 2021-8, establishing home rule by Board of Education, and the district organizational chart for 2020 through 2021. Um, approving our memberships to KASB membership and then also the KASB Legal Assistance Fund, the vehicle mileage reimbursement rate and the destruction of district financial records. And that concludes the consent agenda. Whew. Is there a motion to approve that consent agenda? I'll move to it approve all of that consent agenda. <laughs> and thank you, Jardine. And I see a second from Kristen. And I've got eyes on all of you again, so we can do a hand raise for that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Motion carries six, zero. Thank you. And that takes us over to spoken report, starting with the construction update. Tricia. Okay, good afternoon. Oh, evening, everybody. Sorry. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully I picked the right one. Can everybody see that? No, didn't pick the right screen. Okay, now can you see it? Shoot, what am I doing wrong? Okay, well, I know we have lots of stuff to show you. Let me try again. Eric's gonna try to, to share. <laughs> I don't know why this is not working. Is there it working we go. now? Nope, it went away. We had it. What? Really? Nope, it's back. No, Eric's doing it. There, there we go. Okay, Eric has it. I'll let Eric be Vanna for me, please. You can uh, scroll on down to the third slide. Thank you. So at uh, College Hill, um, all the first coat of painting has started. Um, he has even got um, the room colors in the west wing. It's all happening on the west wing. Metal siding continues um, on the building. It's kind of going a little slower than I think they anticipated. Sheetrock installation is happening on the east end. They got their in-wall inspections done two weeks ago and they passed. So on we go with the uh, sheetrock installation, mudding and taping are happening on the east end. Ceiling grid has begun on the west end. So they're getting the ceiling grid installed. All the electrical big panels and the guts came in uh, last week. So they started installing that stuff. Retaining walls um, continues to be worked on but it'll probably finish up later this week. The storefront entryways are being installed in the north and south corridors. Uh, there's four uh, entries, so they're installing those. Uh, the reason they're installing those is because they're not getting much um, traffic through those doors, so they don't feel that they will get messed up. So they're going to go ahead and install those. Uh, lights and diffusers. Diffusers are those uh, things in the ceiling that let the air come through. They should be delivered next week, and they can start uh, working on those. 
Uh, ECS, which is a subcontractor, they do all the epoxy flooring. Um, Matt uses them for capital projects. They're going to start working on all the bathrooms and uh, remind you there's two bathrooms for each uh, for each for one bathroom per classroom. So there's a lot of bathrooms to do. So once they get the epoxy floors done, then ECS is also working on the polished floors. So um, they've got a lot of work to do. So they're going to start on the 13th working on those epoxy floors. Parsons Technology um, is starting to work on the data, pulling the data wiring um, at College Hill. And the, the one last window we got to put in is what they call the M window, the window that connects between the 100 year old building and the new building where those four administrative offices are. So that's the last window that they have to install. Um, we'll go to the next slide. I just kind of wanted to show you a picture of the mask wearing folks. Um, this is the time capsule that they put together. I'm very proud of them. And then we had Josh Michael with uh, BHS help us. So he kind of gave you a view of the items that they put into the time capsule. So he kind of did you a layer effect uh, with the book and the things about COVID-19. Um, they put a, um, a newspaper article and a plaque in there. And then they put a picture of the building of the hundred year old building and then um, Josh is the one who came up with the plastic tote and wrote on it and he tap conned it to the floor. So it is absolutely going nowhere. So, um, and they will be sheet rocking over that later this week. So I was very happy that he did that for us. So go to the next slide. Just showing you some more pictures of the exterior. That's actually the two top pictures is one side of the front entry and the other side of the front entry. Um, and then just more pictures of showing you the interior, the um, existing part of the building that they're working on, um, the IT room that has a rack in it, and just some of the uh, electrical pieces. And if we go to the next one, uh, just show you some more of the interior um, shots that they're working on. Nothing real fancy. Uh, the bottom left shows you that the walls have the first coat of paint on them in the west end. And the other is the east end, um, showing you some of the sheetrock. And showing you kind of some of the um, retaining wall. So we'll move on to Keith Knoll. Um, we're very happy at Keith Knoll. Uh, city inspection was last Thursday at 11 o'clock. Um, we did receive our TCO, which is temporary, temporary Certificate of Occupancy. So we can temporarily be in there. Actually, we're just in there. They had a laundry list of five items they needed to take care of. Um, so next Monday or Tuesday, the city will come back and they'll check off those five items that we need to take care of. Um, we needed to have asphalt uh, put down. We need to finish up some concrete. So the asphalt is down. Uh, they finished that on Monday. So we are happy. Um, we need to get it striped still, but it's been too hot for them to stripe. So we're hoping that we need some rain, frankly, to cool the asphalt down. Um, it's still pretty hot even when you walk on it right now. Um, when they lay it, it's over 400 degrees when they lay that asphalt down. So we need it to cool off. Um, the building exterior and interior signs are in the shop drawing phase now. So once we get those approved, then they'll get those fabricated and get those um, rolling for us. We have some plannings. We have quite a, quite a bit of plannings that we need to do around the building. Um, we're getting uh, four new trees and, we're repla and we'll be bringing back Keith Knowles tree. Um, but we won't do those till the fall. So we know that they're going to survive. Um, the new roof for the existing building hopefully will be happening in mid-July. I still have not heard back from them on the company that's reorganizing right now. So hopefully that'll happen. But uh, we are happy to give anybody a tour that wants to come out and see us. Um, we'll practice our social distancing, but um, I think you'll see a bunch of happy people out there in their new building. So if you'd like to go to the next slide, just some Finished pictures of the building, maybe a little bit different state than what you saw it at. Um, and our furniture is slated to come in uh, the week of the 15th. So it's only about a week and a half away for the furniture. So if we move on to the next slide, Oliver Brown. Uh, probably not a whole lot has changed other than they continue to work on masonry walls on the perimeter. Um, they are pouring interior footings in area C. Uh, they're prepping for SOG, the slab on grade for the east side of area C. Uh, they begin to pour columns uh, for the main corridor and they'll be working their way towards the media center. There's some columns also in the media center. Uh, Masons continue to work on load bearing walls as they are working. The slab for area B, which is the K1 
pod and the stead shelter was poured last week. Um, Hutton continues to protect that concrete with, um, since it's gonna be polished, they have a type of board that we talked about last week that they're putting down. Um, so they continue to work on that. So until they really start getting into the fine finishes, it's gonna be kind of the same thing for a while, just working on masonry and working on footings and um, slabs. So if we go to the next slide, um, just kind of shows you some more pictures of, there's our water taps that the um, Clark County worked on for us. Shows you a picture of the slab being poured, some more footings and then columns that they worked on. Move on to the next slide. So lots happening at Eisenhower and Anthony. As a reminder, they kind of go site hand in hand with each other. Um, both schools had the slab on grade for the new um, wing is poured and done. Um, at, Eis at Eisenhower, they are preparing to pour the slab on grade for the art room, which is the one single addition at the end of that wing. They will pour that actually tomorrow. They had it ready today, so they'll pour tomorrow. Both schools are working on the footings for the storm shelter. These footings are a little bit more intricate because they have embeds that go into those fittings. The embeds are what are needed. They have steel that stick up through those embeds. And that's what the precast panels stick down to and they attach to. So they're a little bit more intricate and they take a little bit longer to pour those footings for the um, storm shelters. Uh, the precast panel should be here in mid-August. Um, we might get them a little bit before school starts. Um, that would be really nice for us uh, to get those precasts before school starts. But as soon as they get here, they're going to set them. They should take two days per school, honestly, to set those precasts. Uh, they continue to work on load-bearing walls. Um, on the outside, on the slab on grades that we have. AMS has their fire lane um, kind of done. They've got their subgrade with the gravel and they have their first layer of asphalt on it as well. It is not happening at EMS. They won't do that until next year. At AMS, if you've driven by there, they've got the tennis courts laid out and there's poles already um, set in place for the fencing. They will be working on the discus and shot put concrete pad and fencing here pretty soon. Um, AMS did receive their first shipment of heat pumps. Um, they received nine heat pumps on Monday. They've already got them set. They told me today that it takes an hour and a half to set three heat pumps. So the mechanical guy sets the heat pump, the plumber comes right behind him, and the electro electrical guy comes right behind them. So three and an hour and a half is pretty good. Um, they will receive their next shipment tomorrow, which is the balance of the building, and they'll just keep um, hanging those heat pumps just as soon as fast and furious as they can. Um, EMS will not get their heat pumps until July 10th, and then they have some DOAS units um, that they will not get till the latter part of July. So their, their timing is a little bit different on that. Uh, EMS is getting that additional parking on the East uh, Drive. So today they did pour the curb, and next week they'll do the asphalt for that. Um, EMS is also starting to work on their courtyard. Um, so Multicon will be working on that tomorrow and Friday. Um, they'll be prepping and getting some concrete and also prepping for the uh, turf that goes in the courtyard. So we can go to the next slide. Uh, this is just kind of showing you that Anthony, they did work really early in the morning. So they had to have lights to pour that slab, shows you a fresh slab and just shows you some exterior shots and shows you that they're building the wall up against the existing building. And it shows you some interior shots and shows you some epoxy flooring. We'll just go to the next slide. Uh, shows you the shower that's in the nurse's room. We did replace a column in the media center. Um, so we had to pour a footing and then replace it with the new metal column. Um, just shows you some them some just typical <coughs> interior shots. Moving on, Eisenhower um, shows you some exterior. They are putting up some brick at Eisenhower. A little bit different at Eisenhower. Their brick color is a little bit different than Anthony's. Um, Anthony's brick manufacturer is shut down right now, so which is not a big crucial thing for us. But we went, are going ahead and putting some brick up at Eisenhower. So that's just to kind of show you what's happening there. Uh, exciting thing is they got their boiler set um, in the mechanical room at Eisenhower. You go to the next slide. It just shows you some more interior shots. Um, so they're pretty much kind of hand in hand with what uh, their interiors look like with paint and epoxy. If we move on to the next one, Lee, Lee is moving right along. The retaining wall is done. 
Um, they're still sitting about the same 95% on grading and demo. Uh, light pole bases are done and poured. Uh, the utility work is complete. Uh, concrete paving um, will begin hopefully tomorrow. If not, I'll start first thing next week. They do have lead put back in place. It's all poured, so they're just waiting for it to cure out. Um, and then we are going to do a shade structure. The uh, school, Lee, is paying for a shade structure to go on the far uh, southern end of where the parents will pull up and pick up their students. They're going to put a shade structure, 20-foot uh, shade structure there. So go to the next slide. And just kind of showing you what pole base, what Lee Street looks like now. It looks very nice. Um, and just kind of show you kind of how the... Um, what the drive lane is going to look like for the buses and just kind of what the parking lot looks like. Move on. So Bergman's moving right along. If you've been out there, they've pretty much tore up everything. So all the concrete's done. Site utility contractors working on a uh, sewer line. Once it's complete, they'll start working on the stormwater line. Safety, safety fence went up yesterday. Um, erosion control is going up. Um, they will be done with that east parking lot, which we've talked about. Um, they will be done with it by August 4th, and then they will continue to work on the other middle parking lot, which we I hope to have by the middle of September. They're also working on putting on um, a second set of doors on that north entry that where the kids come in through the buses. We're putting in a, a controlled vestibule there. So they're working on that, and we'll have that done by the 1st of August as well. So we'll show some pictures kind of a what everything is looking like. Um, so it's pretty well tore up. So we're keeping Steve apprised of what's going on. So um, that's gonna be a very fast paced project. Moving on to Manhattan High School, not a lot has happened, but since you guys approved the GMP, uh, the team has selected a turf. There was a, you know, I gave them a choice. Here's your choices. We looked at some samples. They touchy-feely, what do we want? So the, uh, the team selected to go with AstroTurf. Um, it is the same manufacturer as Bishop Stadium. Uh, they went with a 3D root system. Um, it's called 3D Root Zone. So it's kind of, you got your long tufts and then you got a short tuft. So um, it holds the rubber in better. It's a better product. Um, so the thing of it is, it didn't fit the allowance. We have a $520,000 allowance built into the GMP. Um, it was at $530,000. But the good news is, and this is a surprise to everybody, I'm giving kudos out to Mikhail Gordon and especially Caleb Gosser. He knew that we were, since we were over $10,000 and Mr. Dorse and Mr. Davis, they were, a lot, they were willing to give up money out of their capital outlay to pay for that $10,000. So they can put that money back into their accounts and Caleb got it down below our $520,000 allowance. So he's working hard for us and I greatly appreciate that. And so that is happy news and good news for us. But they're already working hard for us and we haven't even broken ground yet. So um, moving on, there has really nothing happened with Marlette um, since the last meeting. Warehouse, the design team, um, and the district, we've talked about what's necessary for the warehouse. Uh, the district and the design team, we took a tour of a fairly new warehouse at Lawrence, my old um, stomping grounds that was built about two years ago. Let Jamie go in and kind of touch and feel and look and see um, how she would like to set up her um, warehouse. So Gould Evans has begun to start to lay out the building and start looking at things. So we should have, it should only take about a couple months for them to get a design done on the warehouse. So we'll start um, meeting here probably in a couple weeks on what they have. So, and with that, I am open for questions or comments on what you may have for me. I know it's pretty long. Nothing? I'll take that as a good sign. Thank you. That's all exciting stuff. It's good to see all that progress that's happening. Great. Well, thank and I'm you. I'm sure Keith and all folks are very happy. We are. Come see us when you can. Yep. So, all right. Thanks. Great. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Okay. Dr. Wade. Okay. Eric Reed and I don't have anything to report to the board tonight unless there's a, a question for us about something. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, NEA Manhattan Ogden, is Erin on tonight? I'm on. I'm going to leave my screen the way it is since I tend to have technical difficulty when I share video. But um, we'll go ahead and get started with um, celebrating what's right. Uh, since tonight is going to be on Zoom and we had two, four, six, eight, seven educators that we were wanting to spotlight, um, all of them have graciously agreed to be on the in person agenda at the next board meeting. So on July. Uh, 15th, we're going to be spotlighting uh, Minon Refit, Linda Duckworth, Callista Speak, Angie Alvarot, Andrea Fields, uh, Marsha Schreiner, and Laura Sapp, all educators in USD 383 who had received building nominees for Master Teacher of the Year. This is different than Kansas Teacher of the Year. We haven't even spotlighted those educators yet from this past school year. My hope is that we can um, get this completed, hopefully quickly, uh, honoring all of these wonderful educators in our community so that way we can focus on our upcoming year and all the other educators who are going above and beyond in our community. Um, regarding upcoming district events, I'm going to go ahead and just spotlight the couple that NEA Manhattan Ogden is um, spearheading. So we have our new educator ice cream luncheon, sorry, our new educator ice cream social. That'll be on January 31st. It'll be over at, I believe, East Campus. Board members, uh, you are welcome to come and join that ice cream social. Typically, it's around three o'clock in the afternoon. We would love to have you there. Uh, we are still soliciting donations from the community to cover this event. And then on Monday, August 3rd, we will be having our new educator luncheon. Uh, and so far we have a couple of corporate sponsors that I just wanna say thank you to. Uh, we have Fit Body Boot Camp as a corporate sponsor. We have uh, McAllister's Deli is discounting the box lunches and donating tea to this event. Uh, Texas Roadhouse has a couple of different gift items to raffle off. The Alms Group is another one of our sponsors with gift cards for raffles. And we have a couple others that we are just kind of waiting on hearing back from. So if you were a business in the community and you would like to be part of our new educator luncheon, getting to meet the new educators and community and sharing a little bit about what your business does to help support public education. We would love for you to be part of this event on August 3rd. It'll be at 1130 AM at the high school at East, no, West Campus. Board members, again, you are always welcome to attend this lunch and we would love to have you there and be a part of it. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. And uh, Board of Education, I'm gonna, I'll just call it. I'll go with Daryl first. Nothing for tonight. Okay, Jardine. Um, two things, one, I will continue to say that um, it's never too late to be an activist and to speak out. Um, there's still work to be done for racial justice in Manhattan. And on that same note, I was invited to be a panelist on the KASB um, equity panel, the series that they've been doing. And so I will be on that panel on Tuesday, the 7th, I think it's at 10 a.m. Um, so I hope that you can tune in. That's awesome. Jardine, will you please, um... Once you, I'm assuming they will put out a social media post about that. Yeah. Once yeah. they do, will you share it on your page so that we Definitely. can also share that out? Thank you. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a neat opportunity. Yeah. To highlight yeah, you really and to have that yeah. conversation. Thanks. Great. Kristen. Hello, everybody. I wanted to bring to attention the call that Tracy Emery put out for the Fit Closet for this year, starting to um, gather supplies and donations for students in the district for families that need extra help um, getting their kids um, stocked for school supplies and any clothing that they need. 
Um, they're looking for both financial donations and donations of school supplies. If anyone would like to make a financial donation, um, see the Fit Closet website, they're trying to get cash donations by the 18th of July. They've also set up online order forms through Amazon, Walmart, and Target, so you can actually shop from home. They recommend having it shipped to your house and then bringing it um, to the high school, to MHS West um, by July 20th. Or there is a stuff the bus opportunity on Saturday the 18th from 10 to three in front of Walmart. So all of those opportunities to help students in the district are available to you. And if you need more information, see the Fit Closet or I'm sure Tracy would answer any questions. That's all I have today. Great, thank you. Brandy. Nope, nothing tonight. Thank you. Okay, Katrina. I have nothing to add. Okay, a um, couple things just um, maybe to highlight or give a heads up to our board members. Um, meant to mention it last week and I forgot. Um, Jardine and I have been talking with Dr. Wade some about the um, uh, fall retreat, upcoming fall retreat, and what sort of conversations we would like to um, have in that. And essentially what we've come to you is we, that we would like for the board to focus that retreat on our own cultural competency. Um, so we'll be reaching out to KASB. Um, they did a great training that Jardine and I attended last fall in Topeka on cultural competency and directing that conversation. So we'll be working on that with Dr. Wade um, for what that will look like. Um, and also just in looking at our calendar, I know it's calendared for October. Um, we've kicked around the concept of that maybe it would be a good idea to try to move it up a little bit earlier into our calendars, um, possibly sometime in September. Just not knowing when um, regular old flu season might hit or where we might be. So um, just know that that date could potentially change depending upon what's happening in the world at that point. Um, so that is something that um, I think is a goal for us to keep that conversation. As Jardine said, it's, you know, never a bad time to be an activist. It's also never a bad time for us to work on our own board um, and setting a foundation for that and as far as where we're going to go with cultural competency as a district. So we need to start with ourselves sometimes and do some of that work. And I think it'll be a great opportunity. Um, uh, to the parents that are watching, I'm gonna do a toss out to, if you have a district device still checked out that you had for um, either summer STEM or you had it through the end of the school year last year, we do need those to come back to um, the Robinson Education Center um, so that we can reconfigure, get things set up for a solid distribution next fall or this fall coming soon. So if you do still have a device, if you would please bring that back so that we can then um, get things ready. And then just a reminder to my fellow board members that we also need to bring our devices back to the Ed Center um, to Diane sometime tomorrow so that she can do the same thing for us so that we can get our devices updated and ready for us to be um, set to go next week again. And I think that's all that I had for um, my board report. Um, so from that, we've got the written report from the Manhattan Ogden Public Schools Foundation from Jim Morrison. So take note of that, that was in our board packet. And then moving on to new business, we have item 8.1, the early learning background checks from Andy. And Andy is here if there's anybody with any questions for him. And if there are no questions for him, then I would love or be happy to have a motion. Daryl. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming you said meant 9.1. It's 8.1. It's 8.1? The numbers were off. Oh, okay. I move to accept with first reading the early learning process for background checks. Okay, motion from Daryl, second from Katrina. I can see everybody, so let's just do a show of hands. Motion carries 6-0. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> 
And item 8.2, we've got the English Language Arts Student Workbook Annual Purchase with Lucas Shivers. And there he is. If anybody has any questions for Lucas, seeing none, we'd be happy. I'll take a motion from Daryl again. I move to give final approval for the purchase of student workbook resources for K-5 Wonder CRCs from Follett for the 2021 school year in the amount of 10,329. Okay, and a second from Kristen. All in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 6-0. I hope you all appreciate that I'm count I'm visually counting you. You can watch my lips. <laughs> as I make sure I'm not skipping it. All right, for old business, we have the reopening planning teams with Dr. Wade. Okay, it's been about a month since we uh, had a meeting where we talked about the, the planning teams, the, the planning process and timeline for reopening the schools. In, in August. And since then, the teams have been meeting. Uh, a lot of work has been done. And we know that it, August 12th is, you know, rapidly approaching. So we wanted to give a little bit of an update tonight on where we are with some of those teams. So we're going to go back to the format we used before as far as going through a PowerPoint slide uh, presentation, talking a little bit about the, the progress from the teams. I believe, and here we go. Okay. Uh, we could skip that one. And here's here's the four teams that we we discussed about a month ago that, that have been meeting on a regular basis. Uh, there's the facilities and safety, budget and support, instruction and technology, then the coordination and communication team. The next slide is the communication and coordination. We've had ongoing communication with Riley County Health Department, Kansas State Department of Ed, other resources, gathering uh, documents from other states, other school districts as they go through really a very similar process to what we're going through, looking at what the health experts tell us, what other places are experience, experiencing as they start the reopening process and then responding to you know, the spike that we're seeing now. And what does that mean for the plans that in some cases, we've made tentative plans. Now we revisit those plans based on what's occurring now and maybe occurring uh, by early August. Uh, we do have the reopening planning teams are meeting weekly. We are also putting out information every week to the staff and the families to help keep them apprised of what we're doing. And also recognizing what they really want to know is what are we going to do? What is the what is the actual reopening plan? And we'll be unveiling that here in a couple of weeks. That goes that back to that the, the bottom part of that slide, the reopening timeline that two, two weeks from tonight, we, we will be bringing a, a draft to the board of our reopening plan for 383 schools. The next day, and this is just the way the timing has worked out, would be the next day, the 16th, Kansas State Department of Ed is going to release their guidelines for school districts to follow. And they are guidelines, you know, the, the indication we've got will be that there's latitude at the local levels of how we choose to open schools, but they do need to take in consideration the guidelines from the state. So we'll be watching, you know, eagerly, eagerly for those. Then August 5th, that board meeting for us to come back with the uh, meshing of what we have worked on in the 383 plan with the guidance documents from the Department of Ed and, and making any kind of adjustments we need to there. And then August 12th, first day of school for the students. And I know there's a lot of people speculating about will there be school, all of the things we're planning, there will be school in one form or another, and we're going to be ready for uh, a couple of different options. Uh, no, it will not. It will not be perfect for everyone, but it's going to be as close as we can get it with, with the planning that we're doing. A lot, of, a lot of people involved, lots of hard work going into uh, looking at all kinds of different scenarios that could play out, not just August 12th, but throughout the course of the school year for us to be able to be 
flexible and responsive and adaptive to whatever circumstances are going to occur during the coming year. And we really appreciate the, the support we've got, the input, the help from other entities throughout the community, throughout the state, as, as we do our planning to turn to them to get guidance about, okay, here's what we're seeing, here's where we're seeing differences of opinion but from different different places. What is What are the experts in our area, and particularly, let's say, the health department, uh, what, do, what do our health experts say is best practice for the Manhattan Ogden community? So, uh, can, you know, we continue to appreciate all the support and help we get there. Uh, want to turn it over to the other committees now. The, the next slide is the facilities and safety. Dr. Wade, before yes. you do that, um, just for the sake of folks that are listening and watching and for the board, when you said that you're putting out weekly community like once a week communication I believe that's are you are you aiming to send that out on Mondays just so that folks know when to be looking for stuff Monday seems remember. to be that yeah Friday or Monday depending on how quickly we get it translated because it's all going out in Spanish as well as in English so I think okay. look look for it on Mondays okay I think Thank that's you. just nice for the community to kind of have that kind of scheduling in their mind of when they should have be on the lookout for that sort of information coming from us. Yes, so thank you for that wondering. question. Yep, thank you. Okay, well, I will pick up uh, on our facilities and safety uh, committee and kind of give you a rundown of what we've been working on. We met several times. Um, last Friday we met. Um, and coordinated with the uh, budget and support committee uh, as well. So uh, Jamie uh, Gregory has been helping us a lot as far as procuring supplies and, and hunting down things that we need. So um, first off uh, is, is the hand sanitizing piece. Um, we do have wall mounted um, hand sanitizing dispensers uh ordered and uh, we also have some that are on stands because obviously some some areas we're, we're not able to put those on the uh walls so uh we're purchasing bulk dispensers and uh we were able to find a uh, a good outlet for uh bulk product uh so it'll just come in gallon jugs and we can just uh pour it into the dispensers um, it was a lot more cost effective that way to purchase it. Um, we are also working to purchase hand sanitizer bottles for classrooms and offices across the district so that we can refuel those uh, using the bulk um, product that we get. Um, also working with transportation on how to um, integrate hand sanitizer bottles on each bus so that all of our bus riders can uh, sanitize their hands when they get onto the bus. And then um, that kind of leads into the hand washing piece of it. Um, we're, we're installing hands-free soap dispensers and paper towel dispensers in all of our uh, buildings. So uh, we got eight pallets of uh, paper towel dispensers in last week. And Jamie has been gracious and has been holding those over at the warehouse for us uh, while we were getting moved into our new building. So um, nursing staff, uh, we do have a nurse on our committee, uh, one of our district nurses. So we've got some representation there. Uh, Mindy has been super helpful uh, for giving us a, a nurse perspective on our committee. And uh, so our nursing staff will be working with building administrators on hand washing plans and just some examples of, of how that would work would be, uh, you know, wash our hands in the morning, wash our hands before lunch and after lunch, um, in, once or twice in the afternoon and then before and after recesses. So um, just kind of some examples of how that might work. Um, and then we'll move on to building access. So um, we're going to limit some of our visitor access uh, to the buildings to prevent um, any folks from being in the building that don't have to be there. 
Um, we want our we want our students and our staff to be safe and uh, and not have anyone bring anything into the building. Um, so visitors report to the office and and don't go any further into the building um, as of right now. So um, no field trips, presentations, assemblies until further notice. Um, and then online registration at buildings, we're gonna do that by appointment only and, and limit the folks who come into the building uh, to only those that need to be there. So our, there's been some questions about KSU interns and our student teachers and they'll follow the same protocol as, as our district staff will um, as far as um, you know our, our protocols for uh, taking temperatures and, and making sure that you're, you're staying at home if you don't feel well. So uh, that leads into the temperature checks and um, students would have their, their parents be responsible for taking their temperatures before they leave for school in the morning um, and stay home if they're not feeling well. I know we had talked briefly about the possibility of having our bus drivers take temperatures. That that really didn't work out too well um, because then you're going to have some students that are going to be standing out there at the bus stop. And, and if they're running a fever, then, then what do we do? What happens if mom and dad have already left for work um, and then they're standing out there at the bus stop, not knowing what to do. So um, we felt it was the, the right thing to do to have the parents take that responsibility before they leave the home so that uh, if they're not feeling well, they can stay there. So, um, and then staff will be responsible for checking their own temperatures. Um, and then again, staying home if they don't feel well. So as far as cleaning um, in, our, in our buildings, we're gonna increase our touch point cleaning. We've, we've already done that, uh, but we really haven't had any students back in the buildings uh, since spring break to, to make sure that we were doing things. Um, so, Electrostatic spring, we're gonna have some additional battery powered units coming in uh, fairly soon. So that'll improve our overall efficiency to treat a building. If it needs to be treated, we'll have, we can, we can put several uh, sprayers out there and get it done in a hurry. So um, the buses are already doing the electrostatic spray on a, on a rotation. Um, once a week seemed like that would be sufficient for for the electrostatic part of it. We're also going to put spray bottles of our new chemical on each bus so that uh, they have that solution available to uh, to wipe down seats and stuff in between routes or whenever they have uh, a spare moment when they get back to the barn um, and, and close up their bus for the day. So um, as far as school supplies, we're going to be working with um, our instructional and technology team to develop a plan on, on how that looks. Um, obviously, it's going to be somewhat different from, from building to building um, as far as elementaries and middle and high schools. So uh, we're going to work with them on that. And computer labs and electronics, that was a, that was a big thing um, that we had talked about because obviously you're going to have a lot of a lot of students a lot of touching on the uh, on the electronics and in the computer labs um, so we we have been talking with dr rebel we're we're okay to use disinfectant wipes um, on keyboards as long as we do that cautiously we can't obviously take a a, a really soaked uh ringing wet rag and and wipe down the the, uh, the keyboards uh, because that doesn't mix with the electronic part of it. But um, he, he did say that that would be okay for us to use the wipes on there. So let's see, um, PPE, personal protective equipment. Um, we've gone through several uh, scenarios, our, our office areas uh, and our child nutrition areas. We're, we're planning to have um, plexiglass shields, we've got those ordered. So they'll have um, a barrier in between them and the, and the folks that they're working with um, in those areas. So um, nurses area, 
they are working with Via Christi to be fitted for N95 masks. Uh, N95 masks are a little bit uh, different as their their medical masks instead of just our our cloth mask. But obviously, they need to have more protection because they're having that more one on one with uh, with the illness um, and the the potential for them to contract that. So uh, we do have pediatric and adult masks ordered. And uh, we're going to have those in the nurse's office so that if a student or a staff member gets sick during the day, uh, they can go ahead and get masked up so that we're, we're trying to, um, you know, keep that contained. Um, the masks uh, district wide for, for students and teachers, um, we kind of we're working on a plan uh, for, for both of those. And obviously the, uh, the governor's plan that, uh, that came out um, earlier this week um, will, will make, some, make some difference, I would think, in, in, in our plan and uh, depending on what KSD puts out for us. So um, as far as bus riders, that was, uh, that was one thing that we all agreed on uh, to have our, have our bus riders wear masks when they're on the bus in order to ride the bus. Um, some of the recommendations for um, social distancing on the bus um, would not allow for us to get more than about eight students on the bus on any, at any one time. So um, we, can, we can sit family members, uh, members of the same household together. We'll have some assigned seating, um, those types of things. Um, and, and mandatory uh, to have our bus drivers and monitors wear masks when loading and unloading students just so that they're protecting themselves as well. So um, let's see. As far as social distancing, um, we're going to mandate that uh, that everyone washes their hands or sanitizes their hands before and after recess. Um, that'll ensure that we've got clean hands going out onto the playground equipment and we've got clean hands when we're coming back in. So um, as far as classrooms, we did lay out a classroom with uh, six foot squares over at Northview and it was a kindergarten classroom. Obviously it's gonna be a little bit bigger than, than some of the others. Um, but it, it's, it, we're, we're limited in space. Um, those classrooms aren't, aren't big, uh, big enough to have your, your six foot uh, distance all the way around. So um, our health department gave us some, some direction as far as making sure that we face all of the desks the same direction. Uh, that will help. Um, because then all of our kids will be facing the same direction and, and not uh, face to face. So uh, we'll plan to spread out desks and tables as close as we can to get them as close to six feet apart as possible. Um, obviously our special classes like our PE, art, music, choir, and, and those teams, um, we're gonna work with our instructional and technology team and, uh, and get some teacher input on that before we move too far into that area. Um, lunch and breakfast in, in our child nutrition department. Um, we explored the, some, some options of eating in classrooms and, uh, or, or eating in the lunchroom with assigned seating. Uh, obviously, we're not gonna be able to do the self-serving food. Um, set up like we we have in the past. Um, Stephanie has also purchased tray ceiling machines or is in the process of doing that. So uh, in a sense, it's kind of like a TV dinner type deal where they can they can put plastic over it so that they can stack multiple trays on a uh, on a cart and take them to each individual classroom um, for for less mess. And then uh, moving on to the protocol for illnesses, um, Mindy and the nursing team that we have for the district, they have, they, they really have come up with a very detailed document 
Um, and it, it's, you know, we obviously have limited space for isolation rooms, um, but uh, some of the things that they came up with, you know, having students and staff in the, in the nurse's office, they have to wear a mask. And, uh, and then that, that, that partnership that we have with the Rutherford County Health Department and the, the MHK task force, um, working with them to make sure that we're all on the same page moving forward and we do what we can to, to keep our students and our staff safe. So um, that's pretty much all I have on facilities and safety. If anyone has any questions, happy to answer those. I had one real quick. Sure. Uh, you talked a lot about um, more elementary issues with hand washing and so forth. Have you gotten to middle and high school? We're, it'll be pretty much the same. Um, obviously they won't be going out to recess, but, but they're still gonna need to do, uh, practice those hand washing techniques. And our, our nursing staff um, will be working with um, building principals to, to come up with a plan that, that suits their, their building and their, their age groups. I can just already hear the high schoolers complaining about their five minute passing period. So I imagine that might be a point of discussion. Yeah. And, and we are going to have some uh, hand sanitizer stations throughout uh, the high school. So they'll be on stands. They can be movable. Um, obviously we just, we just want to make sure that, that they're using them. So. Great. That'll help. Anything when we're screen sharing, I can't see anybody. So if anybody else has questions, now's a good time. All right, thank you for that information, right, Matt. That thank was great. You. Thank you, Matt. I know a lot of, lot of good work being done there and a lot of decisions that were made in order to get to the point of making those decisions uh, that you announced tonight. So thank you for that. Next up's the budget and support. Yep. And, um... I'll go ahead and report on that. I want to thank Matt for including most of my stuff so I don't have to talk as much. That's awesome. Thank you, Matt. Um, but our, our groups did work together this week and came up with a lot of a lot of things that we can put into place or at least some ideas thrown out there. Um, so what budget and support has been doing is all those decisions that we've made when we made a commitment to a sanitizer or a personal protection equipment we've been making those purchases and Jamie's been working on finding those. We've been trying to find the money in the budgets to make those work. Um, so we've been working on securing that. As you can imagine, the demand is very, very high for those things. I would say, especially Clorox wipes is probably one of the most difficult things to get your hands on. And it's really hard to get your hands on it in bulk. Um, Jamie can order a couple of things at a time when you're doing this for 7,500 people in your building that doesn't go very far. So that's probably been the hardest thing on there. So anybody that can get a hold of those and get them to us, I would love to have that. Um, but just to show you guys where we're at on the CARES grant award for SPED, um, we were able to get that and that's $143,000, almost $144,000 that we can um, take the extra special education expenses um, related to COVID and we can work on our budget that way. So that'll be a little support, um, back support that we weren't expecting. And so far on our CARES grant expenditures from our original allotment, we've spent about um, $550,000. That gives us oh, roughly $130,000 um, left in that original um, allotment that came to us originally through CARES. Um, also could be set to receive some money from the counties um, and part of their CARES money as well. So I've been in touch, um, visiting with Rich Rargo down there. I know they have kind of contracted out some money to manage that, um, help them manage that, um, to make sure they're doing it correctly. So we'll be in communication with that as well. Um, Matt kind of covered these, but I'll just go over them in one place because we did make decisions. Um, a lot of these things aren't really landed yet but transportation we did. So we are requiring those masks for acceptable face coverings for our bus riders, all our bus riders. Um, drivers will be masked loading and unloading. Some of them struggle, especially with uh, the mask getting in the way of their vision or if they have glasses fogging up and we don't wanna create a unsafe situation from that either. So we're planning on them at, at very minimum being masked when students are entering and exiting the bus. 
as Matt said, we're planning on sanitizing hands upon entrance and exiting the bus, um, but we're not allowed to mount anything permanent onto a bus. So we're finding the right size that can fit in a cup holder and why a cup holder is better than something mounted. You'll have to ask somebody smarter than me, but we cannot mount anything onto a yellow school bus. Uh, as I said, federal rules, sometimes you got to take the common sense hat off, put on, follow your rules and do what you're supposed to. Um, assigned seating, loading back to front. Um, that also helps with the contact tracing if that would ever become a case for us as well. And then spray wipe cleaner between routes. So um, everybody get prepared for what we have coming on the bus and, and we haven't landed the other part yet. So it might even be a longer part of your day, but at least get ready for that. Um, I was able to meet with a group of KNEA leadership and if Aaron's still on there, um, Aaron put together a group of teachers. Um, we, we just kind of sat down and I kind of talked about some of the things we were talking about on our end, just so they had some opportunity to give some input there, um, able to share with, with me some things they were concerned about. So we just talked about some of the potential schedules, you know, if we had to go to an A cohort, B cohort and split those days up where we had to reduce the number of students at school at one time. Um, that's a possibility a lot of schools are even starting with. Um, hopefully that's not our case, but it's it's something we may have to look into. Um, talk about, you know, school schedules during the day. Is it beneficial for us to move back start times, move up start times, move, you know, longer break like K-State? So we talked through some of those things. Um, the online instruction, uh, they started training the trainers for Canvas, and we've kind of committed to the Canvas platform K-12. Um, to be able to put things online and to set up our classrooms that day in case um, number one for good instruction because we want that blended anyway as we said this has been the plan we just put it on fast forward and but it's a, still a learning curve because not everybody was there yet so we, uh, we did um, set aside some money to be able to do some summer trainings that we weren't expecting with a larger number of staff so uh, Paul and Andrea and teaching and learning they've got together some teacher leaders in for Canvas training. Um, I'll throw out uh, Lisa Julian and Stacy Harris have been kind of the point teachers on this training. Those teachers um, do, do a great job, uh, answer a lot of questions, but most importantly, I think they ease people's anxiety, which is probably one of the most important things right now. Um, an anxious, anxious teacher, breeds anxiousness to the students as well and, and to the parents. So getting them where they're comfortable with it is gonna be really important for us to do. And some people that comes a lot quicker than others or more naturally than others. And that's just the way it is. I've kind of said in meetings, you know, we didn't build this staff for online instruction. We built it for relationships. We built it for face-to-face. -face. We built people that are really good with people. We didn't build it, they were really good over computers talking to people. So it's going to be an adjustment. Um, it doesn't play into a lot of their strengths, but we're going to make it a strength um, doing that. So I, th I think there's a plan set aside for that um, to give the teachers the opportunity to come in and learn about the Canvas format, to set up the class, to look at the templates that are already there, and to work together with their grade level teams or their content level teams um, and the groups ahead of them and behind them to talk about what we're doing on Canvas and how they set up their classes. So we're, we're excited about that. Um, we also talked about wireless access and technology, and I'll kind of talk about that here in a little bit. I kind of laid out the plan um, that we put together um, as far as getting access across our community. Um, they talked even about would our tech support, would our tech people be able to help them with their tech support um, at home? This is sometimes the computer works at their school and it works okay at their school, but when they translate it to home, sometimes there's some issues and they might need some help along that or they're just on old equipment and it has trouble working with it anyway. So I know Dr. Ribble is aware of that. It's been working on that. Um, on my duck, Woody, that, that was something we talked about last spring. It's something we've talked about since day one on this is online equity and making sure we can do that for all of our students. Um, potential supervision issues, as Matt said, you know, when we, when we talk about eating in the classrooms, it's not just as easy as saying we're gonna eat in the classrooms because we have to have someone supervise them in the classrooms. And how does that fit into our negotiated agreement? Um, how does morning duty, um, typically on most schools, um, with the exception of the high school, in the high school, they just kind of go, they go where they go. Middle school, you know, if you get off the bus or you go eat, you're in the cafeteria, you're in the gym. 
And if you're in an elementary school, if you're in the gym waiting for a class or you're eating, or sometimes if you're in the small elementaries, that's both happening in the same place. So, you know, putting 350 of our TR teddy bears in that gym eating lunch at the same time is probably not the best social distance thing um, for us to be and congregating everybody in one spot. So we're going to have to work through that. And we're going to have to work through that with our teachers. What are some of the things we're going to have to do um, to make sure we can protect our staff, protect our students and still maintain what we're at, where we're at in the contract. Um, curriculum pacing was something back, 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 back. curriculum pacing was something they brought up too because if if we do have a fluid system of online you know and and what we worry about is kind of quarantine where people are going out for a little bit in for a little bit and they're jumping back and forth or maybe even teachers are doing that too our curriculum pacing across the district is going to be pretty important um, to make sure we're in similar spots um, as as the other classes in case something needs to change you know our teacher teacher has to go on quarantine for 14 days that's two weeks of instruction and whoever slides into that spot needs to have a decent idea where they're at um, to be able to pick up from that so we talked about that a little bit um, great conversation with them they gave me some good ideas um, sometimes they were 50 50 on telling me what to do which doesn't help a whole lot but I, I really appreciate it they're, they're a good group and what I appreciate most about them and this is a compliment to Aaron and the entire KNEA group is they're, they're problem solvers you know, they're, they're not just there to point out the problems. If they were there to point out the problems, we'd probably still be talking um, about pointing out the problems, but they're there to find solutions and to make it work um, for our staff and our students. And I, I, I truly appreciate them. Now we can go on to the next one. Okay. Um, I, I just put together a couple maps and put in the hotspot maps and the access maps together. And it, I, I can't see it very well, but it shows up a lot better on the documents I have that we uh, we talked about putting the ex exterior wireless going down into our parking lots at every building. We talked about the different hot spots that we can put around the community. So I've just got a couple maps and this one's Ogden. So you can see the lower lower right map is Ogden Elementary School. And we just tagged some other spots in town. That's St. Patrick's Catholic Church. I haven't got permission to put all these formal sites on, but I'm working on it. Uh, we, we made contact with them today to kind of put the bug in their ear. Are you willing to do this for us, um, for our community, for the kids in, in your area? So that's the Ogden map that we have um, right now. And that's the greater Manhattan area map that we have right now. You can see that a little better. The purples are the school sites and the pinks are the hot spots, um, kind of where we have them slated to go. We're missing one pink right at the top. I don't know if you guys can see my little mouse guy going, but up here, Andrea, up to the top. No, never mind. Um, up in River Chase just goes off the map on Fort, uh, Tuttle Creek Boulevard. So I've got another little pink dot right at the top middle of that map. Um, we also have two more hotspots. Uh, we, we went ahead and purchased 10 of those. So we're looking for locations for those. Right now, I'm thinking one of them south of uh, Fort Riley Boulevard. Um, maybe I might talk to my neighbor about Rothwell Landscape being a site for us, um, be able to put one in there. Um, we're looking for spots that are easy to get to, that have a little parking that people can just pull up, download, and go away. Um, also in the process of looking for other available Wi-Fi, um, I've been working with the city and the county, the library, and some other entities in town about free public Wi-Fi and trying to get that expanded throughout our community. So I, I threw them out our map so they can kind of see where we're at and the locations we are and they're going to start filling me into date uh, locations where they have Wi-Fi available to the general public too. So I think the only green dot I have up there now is Bluer Plaza, um, which is kind of run by WTC on a contract from from people in the area. So I know there's some other areas in town. Was not gonna include businesses because I knew we'd miss businesses. So I'm just trying to keep it on the public entity um, end. So I, I expect to get a lot more dots around our map. And I'm, I'm pretty excited to do this and share this out with our community, um, both in a Word document form um, that gives it, but also a map that, that shows where those spots are around town. Okay. All right, and that's all I have. Do you guys have any questions for me on the budget and support end? 
Eric, on that south side thought, I wonder about um, by the ball fields at Griffith, is it Griffith Park? Yeah. Because there's good parking there. Yeah, if, if I had an outlet and a good spot to put it, mm. I think that I, I need power a and a little safety. And if, if I can find that spot, that's the location I'm kind of looking for right, right around that area. Well, thank you, Eric, and everybody that's worked on that budget and support team. I believe Andrea Titi is going to speak on behalf of the instruction and technology, at least initially. Yeah, I am. Thank you. So some of our points were mentioned by other teams, which shows how closely we're all working on some of the very same topics that are important for educating our students. We did um, move forward with Canvas being our adopted platform. Our district has already purchased this, we've already been using it, and now we're going to make sure that we're using it K-12. Um, one of the biggest pieces of feedback we got from our community is there were too many options and too many ways that teachers were delivering instruction and connecting with parents and it didn't make teaching as accessible as we wanted it to be. So narrowing it down to one platform that all teachers will use and then our incredible trainers getting those pieces ready for our teachers, um, for our trainers that will start on July 8th. Um, they'll train the trainers and each building will have be represented. And then those trainers will teach individual buildings um, over, before school starts. So, and we recognize that this is gonna be a learning curve of all different sizes for people. And we know that people will work hard and our bis biggest expectation is that everybody moves forward and learns together. And that's what our, our teachers are great at doing. Um, we have our group that's divided into two groups and we are focusing on how we're gonna be supporting students and families to include um, how we're going to train our students on Canvas, how are we going to train our parents on Canvas and use our, that tool as effectively as possible. And then we're also working on making sure that our plan that we're developing, that we have accountability, that we have consistency and that we're providing support um, to everybody as, as consistently and as um, in the high quality support that our, our students and staff deserve. So we sent our initial survey out to educators and asked who would be willing, if, if online teaching was the direction we're going, who would be willing to serve in that role and we got over 500 teachers who said, yep, I could do it. If you need me, I can do it. So we are, we are focusing our energy on developing quality professional learning plans to meet the different needs. Like, so what does one-to-one -one instruction look like? What does um, using Canvas in my instruction look like? What does online teaching look like? So the different... Um, topics that are coming up for how to deliver the best instruction we can in regardless of the scenario that we're in is what our, our group is focusing on right now. Uh, we know that there's strengths and fears from all end, not just our staff, our parents, our families, our kids. So we're working hard to make sure that we are coming up with a cohesive and strong plan to support everybody where they're at and focusing on making sure that we can um, close the gaps as far as resources and make sure we're consistent in our protocols and the curriculum instruction that we're going to be delivering. And Mike, I think this is you. Yes, it is. Uh, just a quick update, uh, not too much from last week, uh, but uh, we have ordered the devices uh, for the K-12 one-to-one. Uh, the, all of those plus all of the uh, items that uh, uh, Eric mentioned about the hotspots and all of that. I've already heard back from them. Uh, so we're working through that piece. Uh, we started collecting the other devices from the other district buildings so that we can get them organized and start planning. Uh, some of the things that were purchased last week were uh, additional cases. So we needed to start setting out um, and identifying how many we need and what, you know, how they need to be organized. Uh, we have been collecting devices as well from the summer STEM and from back into the continuous learning. Um, we still have a number of those that are out there. I think we are going to try another push next week 
uh, trying to do maybe some off hours, some some later in the uh, afternoon, evening, uh, not late evening, but evening hours to help those that are now back working to uh, to have a time to be able to drop off those uh, devices. So uh, we really need to get those back in so that we can get all of this organized because because this is our first shot at really doing one-to-one. -one. We really wanna make it a positive experience. And then as we need to replace systems, we wanna know which ones do we need to focus on. So by having them all organized in grouping types, and that's what the staff is doing right now is organizing all of those into the different uh, model types that we get to a place where we're ready to replace, you know, a group of, of iPads. We know where to go to instead of one out of this grade level and 10 out of here and 20 out of here. We do them as organized grade bands so that we can make sure that, uh, that we're doing this appropriately and responsibly uh, with our students. So um, it's, uh, we're already talking about how we're going to distribute um, a lot of ideas, um, you know, there's best case scenarios and then uh, some, of, some of it is uh, where we're at today. And, uh, you know, we can, uh, we, we may have to uh, uh, make some adjustments and uh, try to make it as, uh, as positive an experience. Uh, but as uh, Andrea mentioned, you know, we're working with our teachers already trying to do a lot of backfilling so that they feel comfortable um, we've had some experience already. Uh, Duke Harmon's already been work, had been working with the uh, fifth up through uh, tenth grade uh, staff, so you know they've got some experience. But you know there's there's always room to continue to grow, um, especially in education. Uh, so uh, that's uh, kind of where we're at today, and uh, we're going to continue to get this uh, get this organized and get it ready for uh, as close to the beginning of school as we possibly can. Any questions for instruction to, in technology? Okay, not, not seeing any. I think as far as a closure to this, this presentation would be that what we agreed to with the reopening planning team for tonight's PowerPoint would be, these are the areas that decisions have been made about that we're comfortable going out and saying, this is where we land as a district on these positions. There's still a lot of areas out there, you know, people at home probably have their checklist of things they were listening for that didn't get covered. We acknowledge that. Uh, the, the reason that those things haven't been covered is probably they're some of the most difficult decisions that still need to be made. We may be waiting on direction from someplace else. We've got some some conflicting areas we need to work out before we can announce those decisions, but that's gonna be the work that's gonna be done within the next two weeks before we come back to the board with our draft plan. Uh, there is a method to the madness, I, for lack of a better term, that with the uh, online registration, central registration, the timeline with us coming to the board in two weeks on the 15th with the guidance from the Kansas State Department of Education coming out on the 16th. Then we've got online registration July 20th, central registration July 24th. That will give people, families, the information they need in order to be able to make the decisions for themselves about what, what is going to be best for their family as, as we rapidly approach the beginning of the school year. So we will get that information out. Uh, give them an opportunity to digest it, ask their questions before they're asked to make decisions about what's going to work best for them starting the year. So uh, appreciate all the work everybody's put into this. We'll continue to work hard and get the best plan we can together. And I know you, you know, people have heard that for months now, and we're continuing to do the work. And just like you've heard that for months, you're going to continue to hear wash your hands, stay home if you're sick, all of those other things, that's not going to go away. If anything, you're going to hear it more as we get closer to the start of school. So uh, unless there's questions for me or the rest of the team, that concludes tonight's presentation. Any questions from any of us for Dr. Wade? No? 
great. That was, um, I think, helpful information. Thank you. Thank you to all the teams for the work that they've been doing and um, for that presentation of it so that we kind of have a good picture of where we're going. Um, item 9.2 is budget planning with Lou. Okay, I don't have any printed material for you tonight. I'm not, a, not a lot of, of new information. Um, we were able to finish out and cl actually close out the books today, which is the earliest that we've ever been able to do in my nine years in the office. So fiscal year 20 is closed. Uh, we did one additional transfer. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate that. Kudos to, mm -hmm. to a lot of the, the my staff and especially the Jill Tatum, our budget and grant account, who kind of takes the lead on that. The ladies in payroll, payroll coordinators did a fantastic job. So that, that's a big undertaking. We did one additional transfer and I'll have the printed report for you at the on the 15th, but we did a transfer of $99,569 from general fund to contingency. Uh, we will not be doing any more transfers from uh, the supplemental general LOB fund. We decided to leave the balance there uh, for mill levy management purposes to try and help the mill levy. So uh, that's kind of the status of where we stand with the fiscal year 20 budget and transfers. Uh, the other item, we did get the final uh, assessed valuation report from the fourth county in the district, which as I noted last time, it's about County. It's a, a very small portion of the total pie. Uh, so our, our total valuation, uh, assessed valuation, when you put them all together, the increase was 1.94%. So again, that's a little bit below kind of what some of the projections, the growth projections of three to four to five percent that that uh, some of the mill levy uh, projections were built on for the bond and interest funds. So we'll have to see once we get the budget software and can start working with that. Um, you know, how that works out and what the mill levy looks like. Um, Eric and I go to Shawnee Heights tomorrow afternoon for the KSD budget workshop. So we'll get to see uh, and hear from Dale and Dale Dennis and Craig Nineswander, uh, what's the newest information. And the software itself is projected to be out uh, somewhere around the 10th of the month. Uh, it's, they're in a kind of in a testing format right now, uh, trying to see if there's any bugs in it and those type of things. And, and depending on how that goes, is, is determines and drives when the actual release of the final version is. But uh, they've said that somewhere around July 10th is when they hope to get that out. So my hope, if I get it around that time, is that I can have enough time to get numbers in and, and uh, projections for the middle of it for the 15th. It's, it's going to be tight, and, and we'll have to wait and see where we're at at that point. Uh, but we'll do our best to try and at least have some idea of, of where we stand and projections for mill levy. On, on that, uh, our next regularly scheduled meeting. And that's all I have for you tonight. Okay. Any questions for Lou? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, that concludes our old business. For our next regular meeting, I think it's gonna be pretty full meeting. On the 15th of July, we'll have budget development, Head Start Federal Report, Early Learning Program Employee Handbook, and Student Handbook, MHS, student handbook, classified handbooks, and food service annual report. In addition to the information we'll be getting from Dr. Wade that night, obviously about um, updating where we are on reopening. Um, and from there, we removed our executive session. So at this point, I think that concludes all the business that we have for this evening. If there's anybody who would like to make that magical motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Adjourning. Jordine moved. Is there a second? Daryl, gotcha. And I can see everybody. So let's just do a raise of hands. All right. I see six. And with that, motion carries six zero and we are adjourned. Um, final reminder, make sure you bring your device to Diane tomorrow at the Ed Center. And have a great evening, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.